once again, the web is on fire. And you'd think that one day, JavaScript developers would learn. They would learn not to make their entire project dependent on this one little library, and when that library goes away, everything just collapses. So this time, unlike Log4j, it wasn't a mistake that someone made. This was intentional. So Marek Squire is the maintainer of both FakerJS and ColorJS, which just on NPM alone had 21,000 dependent projects with a combined weekly downloads of 25 million has effectively gone rogue. What I mean by this is he took both these projects and then basically blew them up. So ColorJS was a library to add colors into a Node.js terminal, and for this one he submitted a very simple patch. This patch added in a, uh, a for loop. This for loop started at 666 and then counted to infinity, which if you couldn't tell is an infinite loop. And while it's doing this it just spews out garbled data and obviously doesn't continue from that point. ColorJS, you could still roll back to an older version. FakerJS, though, well, that one's a little bit different. This one, he straight up just yeeted the repo off the internet and replaced it with a readme that said, what really happened to Aaron Schwartz? Now, most sensible projects will lock their dependencies and say, I'm not going to go past, let's say, version 1.4.0 in the case of ColorJS. But anyone who didn't do that and went up to the latest version is going to have both these broken versions. And it seems like absolutely nobody learnt their lesson since LeftPad, and this XKCD once again becomes incredibly relevant. Now, it's incredibly easy to jump to Marek being a bad guy. I've seen tons of comments saying, oh, if he didn't want to work on the project anymore, he should have just left it as it was. And I've seen some people even going as far as saying that this is dependency terrorism. And you know what? I think that is a totally valid opinion to have. But it's also totally valid to say that what this was, was an open source software protest. To understand where that's coming from, we need to go back to 2020, where on the FakerJS repo, Marek posted this. No more free work from Marek. Pay me or fork this. Respectfully, I am no longer going to support Fortune 500s and other small size companies with my free work. There isn't much else to say. Take this as an opportunity to send me a six-figure yearly contract or fork the project and have someone else work on it. And overall... This was a fairly well-received statement. There were a couple of people who didn't agree with this, and a couple of people who were kind of confused, but for the most part, people seem to completely agree, and the comments show exactly the same thing, saying, kudos to you, sir, power to you, solidarity forever. And overall, people saying, yeah, if companies are going to be using an open source project, they should be paying for it. And he followed this up with a blog post explaining more about what was going on, about how no one really pays for Faker. Yeah, they get a couple of donations on the Open Collective and through GitHub sponsors, but not the kind of salary you'd expect if you're working as a software engineer. But Faker being effectively the de facto standard for generating demo data was being used at massive companies like Google, Amazon, Twitter, Facebook, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And not a single one of them was acknowledging that Faker actually exists with a donation. At that time, he tried to reach out to some companies who he knew were using FakerJS. Some of them did reply to some emails, but ultimately ended up ghosting him. Others just didn't reply altogether. So what happened a couple of days ago was basically just Marek giving up on open source software. First, he posted the change to FakerJS. Then a couple of days later, he posted the change to ColorsJS, along with this issue saying, oh, we are aware that there is a problem. We are now working to fix the situation in the most corporate speak possible. And following this, GitHub actually suspended his access to his account. The repos still do exist, though. He is just not able to log in. It may seem weird that GitHub suspended him, but it should be noted that NPM is owned by GitHub, which is owned by Microsoft, so this is sort of all under the exact same banner. And when someone pushes out a known malicious patch, it's not uncommon to be banned from GitHub. Should he have been banned? Honestly, I don't think so. I think that GitHub should just exist as a way to host source code, and that's about as far as it goes. But when you rely on a centralized remote repo, it's going to have control over your source code, whether you like it or not. So to make sure that no one can get completely destroyed by this new version of Colors.js, 
Uh, NPM actually rolled back down to the latest version that actually works, that being 1.4.0. FakerJS, it's a little bit harder because the repo is completely gone, so that one actually is still completely broken. One thing I touched on but sort of brushed over was Aaron Schwartz. I don't want to get too deep into politics here, but I think it is important to know who Aaron Schwartz actually is. So Aaron Schwartz was an early internet activist. He was the creator of Creative Commons, involved in the creation of RSS and Markdown, the co-founder of Reddit, and many, many other important works that sort of, I guess, are the structure of the modern internet. But in 2013, he was charged with wire fraud upon accessing the MIT network and illegally downloading academic journals. Shortly after this happened, though, he was found to have hung himself. Now, some people question whether that actually happened or whether it was a political assassination. I am not getting into that in this video. That is a topic for someone else's channel. But that's what this thing about Aaron Schwartz actually is. Back to the software though, some people have been questioning whether Marek had any right to destroy both these projects because there are so many projects that are dependent on them, it's more than just a project that he made. But it's important to note that both Colors.js and Faker.js were licensed under an MIT license. So this has a clause that says, the software is provided as is, without warranty of any kind expressed or implied, including but not limited to the warranties of merchantability, fitness for a particular purpose and non-infringement. In no event shall the authors or copyright holders be liable for any claim, damages or other liability, whether in an action of contract, tort or otherwise, arising from, out of or in connection with the software or the use or other dealings in the software. In short, what that basically means is by using ColorJS or FakerJS, you're agreeing that the software may not work, and that's the end of that. The argument against that is there is a lot of people making use of ColorJS or FakerJS that aren't using it directly. They're using an application that has a dependency, that has a dependency, that has a dependency, that is ColorJS. This is sort of the state that modern web development is in, Everything is just libraries entangled with each other, and you sort of have to accept all of these licenses without ever knowing they actually exist. Whether that contract actually holds then, that's a question for a legal team. But the other thing about MIT is this right here. Permission is hereby granted free of charge to any person obtaining a copy of this software and associated documentation files, the software, to deal in the software without restriction, including without limitation, the rights to use, copy, modify, blah, 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 blah. The thing about MIT is this line right here is incredibly important. I personally think that open source software developers should be paid for their work, especially when you're making heavy use of that project and you have a lot of disposable income for example, you're one of the Fortune 500 companies. We can hold up projects like Blender, Linux, Critter, GIMP, and all of these other massive open source projects as beacons of open source being a viable business model, but that's sort of forgetting about the fact that millions of other projects receive nothing or effectively nothing, and this is a serious problem. It's all well and good to say that people develop open source software out of the goodness of their heart, and there are a lot of people who do that. There are so many amazing projects that started like that, and then over time built up a user base, and at some point, the developers started making money. For example, OBS. They wanted a way to capture their StarCraft gameplay, and then eventually OBS became the de facto standard that we capture our desktop with. But it can be argued that if your intention is to make money from the start, releasing it under something like MIT probably isn't the best strategy to take. You should release it under, say, a proprietary license and then charge a fee for it. Or if you want it to be open source, use a license that enforces payment for commercial usage. For example, the way that Bitwarden handles it. This is a really complex situation. I can't really say whether what Marek did was good or bad. You can argue that his actions were certainly negligent, considering how many users he knew he had and how much damage he knew it would actually make. What he could have done is just slapped a deprecation notice on it and then walked away or kept protesting seemingly in vain. But I really, 
I really don't know. What I do know, though, is that he's lost all trust of all developers, and there is not a chance he is ever getting a job as a developer from this point on. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you think that what Marek did was right? Do you think that open source developers should be paid by big companies who are actually using their software? Do you think that maybe people should swap over to licenses that actually enforce commercial payment? I would love to know. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribe to only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a T and a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays linked down there as well. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.